are going to be unboxing this glorious, massive box. That, that's me on the right. My name is Sam. And on the left is my brother, Jacob. I think I've adopted because look at the size difference between us. And who in the world dresses me? I do live alone with three cats, and you could clearly tell I am single. Uh, who in the right mind wears a California Angels hat with a Utah Jazz sweater and sweatpants? That's right, not a lot of people. All right, here, me and my brother are unpacking a wood chipper. This box is 450-ish pounds shipping. Uh, out of the box, it's about 430 pounds. Right now, what I'm doing, if you've noticed, I'm using a hammer to lift up these little tabs here. And uh, make sure you have gloves because they can be sharp and they are not the easiest to lift up. I am using a hammer. We decided to get some pry tools and a screwdriver. And, and, and it seems to be working pretty well, as you can see. It looks pretty good. Uh, it is cold in that uh, garage there. So uh, if you stub your finger, you're going to have a bad night. We don't want to have a bad night, so you make sure you wear some gloves and make sure you have a partner with you. Because as I said, this is 450 pounds of raw heaviness, and you do not want that on your foot. Now, uh, the shipping company that sent it out to me, uh, they were very efficient and very uh, prompt with sending me the wood chipper. They let me know exactly when it came, and it was an awesome shipping experience. Uh, the guy pulled it off this massive truck and put it in my garage. And uh, there we go. We, we are lifting that up, and it is very well packaged. Um, absolutely loved what I saw in there. Had no idea what I saw. This is my first ever wood chipper in my life. If you guys are wondering what type of wood chipper this is, this is the APWC 420 wood chipper Mulger 15 horsepower JD engine, 420 cc's gas powered chipper shredder, 2000 RPM double edge blades. And it is amazing. It has a six foot feed, or is that six inches? I don't know. I'm looking at a six. Uh, I would say six feet. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know numbers. You know what? I graduated first grade. We're good. All right, so we just got off the first panel here, and we got to see the glorious, oh, there we go, packaged very well, confirmed, and uh, it's absolutely fantastically packaged, we absolutely love it, and there we go, I'm pulling out some of the accessories, this is very well packaged, you get everything in there, we unfortunately, stupidly, did not use all the tools in the kit that it came with, uh, there are off-road tires, as you can see, there's one of the tools right there, uh, it's like a wrench type thing, really long, like, shaft, we are going for the word shaft there, um, and it is absolutely fantastic, heavy duty, it gives you all the tools that you need, we unfortunately did not use all the tools that were in the kit, because uh, we thought we had better tools, and so we just used whatever we had at the time. As you can see, it's very well bubble wrapped, and uh, we just, it's very heavy. Never do this with yourself. Never, not, not like with yourself. Don't ever do it alone, because my gosh, it is very heavy, very dangerous. Uh, machinery, there, there's all the tools right there, it comes with tools, it comes with all the accessories, there it is all laid out, as you can see it looks fantastic, it is fantastic, it's all very high quality stuff, so it, it comes very well packaged, so I hope you can see that from this picture here, and uh, if you can't, I'm so sorry, uh, the picture wasn't the greatest, but that's alright, those are all the accessories there, and uh, we were pretty happy and impressed by that. Now, if you're wondering what you're looking at right now, to the left there, that is the feeder chute. Uh, there's the battery. This version that they sent me uh, has two ways of starting it. One is a pull start. The other is a electronic key start. Um, and right now, I am pulling out the exit chute. This is where all the stuff that you just shredded through this fantastic machine. That is called the exit chute. Down at my feet right there, you can see the off-road tires, uh, which they are in fantastic shape, already pumped up. 
or some of the tools that feeder shoot. You can adjust the um, angle of where it shoots. You can make it shoot up, make it shoot down. What I'm holding there is called the feeder shoot. I don't know if that's official name, but that's what we're calling it. I'm pulling out the kickstand right here, which you're going to put on the back side of the wood chipper. Uh, has a that little red button at the top is called the kill switch and uh, if you start getting sucked into that make sure you have a buddy pushing that kill switch because my gosh you will die and uh or get severely injured please do, make sure if you do play around one of these you are playing with it as safe as possible we don't want you to die because that would be sad and your parents would miss you so uh, there is a toilet seat in there. That is not part of this project, but it is uh, visible. It's all right. There is the engine. The engine is in fantastic shape, obviously, because it is brand new. You can see the turnkey start right there and the pull start. Um, the key start, I haven't even actually started this as of making this video. I haven't started the thing. So uh, I'm pulling out the trailer hitch attachment. And uh, that could go on the back of a fancy truck. Unfortunately, you cannot go very fast with this. The max they told me was around 20 miles an hour. So this is me and my brother um, pulling off the rest of the sides. You, you got to do those tab things all around this box. It is a very uh, intense box. You got to be very careful, careful with it. Make sure you do not have children near you because they would get injured. My brother actually right here uh, got injured when he was pulling off this one. Uh, he unfortunately got cut on the neck, which you might see. Uh, shield your eyes because it is violet. No, I'm just kidding. It's not violet, but uh, it did hurt his feelings. And uh, that was fantastic. Apparently, I'm trying to uh, pull that sucker off and failing miserably. So if you guys are wondering why is this a uh, called a garage, uh, it was at one time, it was like a overhang shading garage. See, he's pointing at his neck there. He got injured. And I'm saying, poor baby. So now we are seeing the um, install of one of the wheels. Now, while we were doing this, uh, the wheels, uh, we kind of screwed up. All right. So on one of the wheels, we installed it upside down and you'll you'll see this here in a sec now the error that we see right here that we make we didn't understand the actual positioning of the wheel to uh install it correctly so we kind of screwed up on this wheel uh you will see uh something at the top of the wheel that should not be there and i will point that out to you right here we are about to hit that uh, mistake. It is right there at the top, right there. That is the mistake. Do not have that on the top when you're installing the wheels. This is the correct side. Uh, correctly installed. There we go. It is correctly installed. So that little uh, roundish axle thingy needs to be on the bottom. Uh, we found this out the hard way. When we put it all together, uh, I noticed that the wood chipper was leaning and not leaning like you're leaning into a girl trying to ask her on a date. It was leaning into a bad area of the world. So we had to take off the wheel and reattach it. And as you can see, my brother is attaching all four um, bolts on each, each side. It does make it lopsided, so that's the correct side. That's the correct side. You can see how the axle's on the bottom there. That is correct. So the kickstand and trailer attachment. So this one, it took a little sec to, to figure this one out, but it's not really hard to put this whole thing together. Pretty much what you need to do is uh, attach uh, the four screws, reinforce them, make sure you have the washers, all that jazz. So he's trying to align it right here and uh, he's doing a good job, a little struggles, little struggles, but that's okay. So as you can see here, he uh, attached all the four screws. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just put on the screw, put on the washer, make sure it's nice and tight. He's trying to maneuver it right there. Make sure you put it in the right angle, whatever feels good. Uh, the instructions weren't the best, so we had to interpret a little bit. And uh, the kickstand's really cool because it could go up, it could go down, and uh, it 
definitely holds the unit, makes it balanced, and uh, does a great job. And you, this is the feeder chute here, and it was quite challenging to figure out. Pretty much what you need to do is you need to slide it in two slots right there, right, and tilt it to the side. And that's how we got it into the slots, and then you uh, push it to the other side, which we're going to show you right here. You just slide it. See, oh, it slid in right there. We're pretty proud of that moment. And then we're going to slide it right there. Oh, it aligns well. Just screw it on, screw it down to secure. And uh, you're done with the feeder shoe. Make sure when you are uh, screwing things in, you definitely secure them in tight because it will be a sad day in the land of Oz if you do not tie them down and they come flying in your face and then you lose an eye and then it's a sad day for everyone. And right now you're going to see my brother, uh, he's going to remove the kickstand to slide in trailer hitch. So we're going to attempt to uh, slide in the trailer hitch portion, which you need to remove the kickstand portion to slide it in all the way and then you just attach it all. So uh, there's probably an order that we missed, and we probably should have done this before, but we didn't, and we are trying to figure out how to attach this. As you can see, Jacob is, uh, his name's Jacob, by the way. I don't know if I said that before, but he's trying to figure out how to get the trailer hitch further back. Uh, that was our main goal, so all the holes would align. And you can see he's trying to maneuver it. So that's the kickstand portion right there. He's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That is not aligning up. What are we doing wrong in life? And then we're just like, oh, pull out this pin. And so he's going to pull out that pin and hopefully get it aligned and not damage it. It looks like he's doing a good job. There we go. The pin is out. The pin is out. And then you got to move that kickstand back closer to the machine. Uh, apparently, we installed it incorrectly before. We were too hastily about it, but we were able to uh, solve it. And as you can see, it, all the holes align. And we're able to uh, screw it and secure it in place, which is fantastic. He is struggling there. That strong young man, father of one. He's doing fantastic. Push it in, good brother. My brother's going to be attaching the other screws into this trailer hitch attachment and kickstand so it all comes together. And uh, you got to make sure this is uh, fully secure because if it is not, and you are flying down the road at 20 miles an hour max that you can go with this, then you do not want this to fly off and kill someone. That would be a bad day for everyone. So he is uh, attaching all the other screws, as you can see, and doing a fantastic job at that. Good job, Jacob. I used to call Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. Little nickname for my bro. And uh, I'm apparently the biggest in my family. It's, it's really weird. Uh, I don't know if there's any infidelity, but I am huge compared to the rest of my family. All right, there is the kickstand. There's the pull latch. You, you, pull, you pull that out to lift up the kickstand, pretty much. Uh, and then you could travel with it and uh, attach it up, and it works out pretty well. After you got everything tightened down, there it says off-road only. And there's the finished kickstand and trailer hitch. Now we're going to be working on the exit chute. The exit chute right there, and uh, with the exit chute, it's pretty much the same concept as the feeder chute. You just slide it in and tilt it to the side. Make sure you have a buddy with you because it is difficult and awkward and heavy. So I don't know how much each component weighs, but it is a lot. Now, as you can see, we slid that sucker in like it's our birthday, and uh, we're going to be tightening it down. On the other side, make sure you do not put your hands in this machine. That is what that yellow symbol means. You're going to lose your fingers. This is not a toy. It is a machine of destruction. And it does a, a fantastic job of that. And we will definitely have videos of that uh, when we are doing uh, service for others. Screw it down after you slide it in. That is a basic concept. 
It's not really hard. We are using a rocket wrench, whatever it's called. I think it's called a rocket wrench, but uh, it's the thing that screws it down even tighter. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it looks like all tied down. And uh, we need to connect the kill switch here. It's uh, pretty self-explanatory. You just connect the female part into the male part. They are our best friends, and they will slide in like it's their anniversary. And uh, now you got to attach the axle covers, which protects the axles from uh, rust and grime from getting in there. And there they are on both sides. Route the battery core, cord management. This does have cord management on it. And I didn't realize this till after I connected the battery. There is a hole at the base of the feeder chute uh, that runs along horizontally. You just uh, push the core through the hole. Just like so, push that sucker in. There, there I am struggling with that dang camera because I was alone at this part. My brother had to go home and take care of his baby and a little wifey and uh we are gonna pull that through and uh it made it look way better when i got it done it was fantastic and we are gonna connect the cord to the battery now don't quote me on this but I, I, there's a negative and a positive but i don't know if it really matters on this battery Hopefully I didn't make a mistake here, but I connected the green side first, and after that I connected the red side, and uh, there we go, I'm pointing out green to green, red to red, and I pass first grade with all A's. And uh, make sure you align the holes, then put the screw in, it's pretty simple and easy to figure out. You could put some uh, solutions or some battery corrosive stuff on it to uh, prevent any corrosive thingy. So this battery that you're looking at is not a normal battery. It does not come with every unit. Uh, it comes with my unit because I am spoiled. So we have the uh, pole start and the electric start, which we will go over in later videos. So stay tuned for that. And we are about to connect the red battery section screw thing right there look at the size of my arms they are just blocking all the view so you cannot see it i must work out and there we go there we go and make sure you tighten it down just like with everything else now this is what it looks like uh all put together uh it also comes with the battery tie down uh which pretty much secures the battery when you're moving it all around i'm showing some fancy tools that i'm using Guess that's a half inch wrench that I'm using. Good for me, I know how to read. And uh, just tie it down, pretty easy. There's a rubber piece and a metal piece right there and a couple screws. Uh, make sure you have a washer uh, with, at the base there. You can see there's a washer and you just tighten that sucker down so it's all secure and nice. This is what the unit looks like uh, fully completed and put together. The setup took roughly an hour and a half to do with two people. So uh, I did haul this around my block looking like a weirdo and uh, I had no truck or four-wheeler but I did it with my manly muscles. So uh, there's the gas tank, the full start, the turn start, there's the wood chipper AP WC420, it is the highest uh, tier wood chipper you can get from All Power. All Power makes fantastic equipment, and uh, there's some beautiful shots of it. I look like such a weirdo when I was taking these shots, but I do not care. As you can tell, I am not very shy, but I love my wood chipper. And uh, make sure you guys stay tuned to uh, other videos that we are going to be doing a uh, service for other people around us. I'm going to be trying to help people with this wood chipper and do a service for our fellow man. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Go check out All Power. See ya!